For the longest time, I've wanted to set up an advanced home networking solution. As I add more and more devices to my home network, I'm finding that the Wi-Fi just isn't keeping up. I'm getting spotty network connections at either end of the house, and I'm not always able to receive the full speed of the internet connection. In addition, I have three Nest Wi-Fi cameras, which aren't uploading data at the best speed that they possibly can, resulting in a lower image quality. So my main goals for this upgrade are to, one, ensure that I'm able to access the internet consistently in any part of the house, two, prevent dropouts and inconsistent speeds, particularly when doing things like teleconferencing or gaming, three, I want to ensure that Nest Wi-Fi cameras are streaming at their greatest potential for the best image quality possible. Four, I want to keep some tabs on the internet speed provided by the ISP as I find it often fluctuates. And five, I want to learn about networking and play with some cool toys. For internet, our ISP delivers cable via HFC and also supplies us with a router capable of 4G failover. So in the event of our hardwired internet go going down, it flicks over to that 4G backup. But if we go directly from the cable box to our router bypassing that ISP provided router, it will switch over to 4G. So, for, so what I'd plan to do is use this 4G backup as a second WAN or internet input to, and then allow my router to determine when to switch over to that 4G backup. To facilitate this setup, I need a router and I've chosen the Ubiquiti USG Pro 4 router. A network switch is used to allow different devices to connect and communicate with each other over the network. To work out the size of the switch that I need, I made a list of all the different devices that I need connected over the network. Over the ethernet cable, that is my NAS or network attached storage, Philips Hue bridge, a PC, and then two TVs. This is at least five connected ethernet devices, plus any access points that I want to add. In addition, I basically want to wire up every ethernet port in the house, so I don't need to worry about patching and unpatching, of which there are 16 ethernet ports across the house. So I decided to go with the 24 port switch with power over ethernet to power the access points so they don't need separate power plugs to power them. In particular, I've decided to go with the Ubiquiti Unify US24250W, a switch with enough ports that I shouldn't ever need to run out and more than enough port power for my access points. Everything else connects over Wi-Fi, including three Nest cameras, four laptops, four iPhones, an iPad, two Kindles, some Google Homes, Chromecasts, Amazon Alexas, a PS4, uh, an Xbox One, and some other IoT devices. What a mouthful. For access points, I've decided to go with two Ubiquiti Unify AP in-wall pros, delivering a powerful 802.11 signal in a discrete form factor. With all this new equipment, we need somewhere to store it that isn't just stacking hardware on top of other hardware. Fortunately, I have access to an old rack that isn't being used anymore. Both the router and the switch come with rack mount kits so I can easily install them into the rack. I also want to put my network attached storage or NAS in the rack as it currently takes up a lot of space in the desktop PC case. So what I'm going to do is purchase a 3U where U is a standard unit for rack height computer case and then I want to transfer my NAS into that. I made a quick diagram showing how my rack is going to be configured. Starting from the top I'm going to have the router on top of the switch for short cable routing to the 24 port switch from the router. The switch is next, directly above the patch panel, so the majority of our cables will only have a very short distance to travel between the patch panel and then the switch on top of that. Underneath the patch panel is where I'm going to slide my NAS in, taking up that whole 6U rack. In summary, my network will look something like this. The internet is coming in via two sources. Firstly, the HFC connection as the primary WAN, with the 4G backup as the second WAN in case the primary connection fails. The USG router will handle this, as well as providing a firewall to prevent unwanted outside traffic. This USG will then connect to the switch, which will then give internet access to all the devices that are connected to it. The switch will then connect to the two access points, providing both data and then power over ethernet as well, in addition to connecting the various wired devices. Both the Philips Hue and the NAS are nearby, so I'll be able to patch them directly into the switch, while the rest of the devices, such as the PC and the two TVs, will run over ethernet patching that's already in the house. So, now that I've decided what I'm gonna buy, I went ahead and purchased all the cables and the equipment. To give you an 
idea of where I am now, take a look at my home network tour video that I made a few weeks ago. There are quite a few steps that we need to go through to get to the ultimate home network setup. And I'm gonna bring you along the journey. Now that we've planned the setup, the second step will be do, to do some cleanup and preparation of the house. There are some ethernet cables that I haven't ran properly or I haven't ran at all and some wall plates are in the wrong spot. And so what I need to do is move them and I also need to run one more run on the outside of the house to get ethernet from the attic where all the patch panels end up to the back of the house where the living room is. In part three, we're gonna be unboxing and physically installing the new network gear, including the access points and then patching everything together. This will include setting up the new rack and transferring the NAS into a new rack mounted PC case. The final step will be setting up the Ubiquiti gear via the software, including setting up the Unify controller, adopting all the hardware, and then finally configuring the network. In addition, in this video, I'm also going to configure my NAS to run a flavor of Linux that isn't as restricted as the current NAS for free software, so then I can use the NAS for more than just file storage. Once we've finished all those steps, I plan on creating an updated network tour, so you'll be able to catch that on this channel as well. I'm really excited to get this project underway and I can't wait to share my progress with everyone. If you're as interested in, as I am in networking or if you have any other suggestions for this project, feel free to leave them down in the comments below or you can send me a tweet at Teenologetic. Thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in part two.